전갈을 찾는 가장 쉬운 방법은 무엇일까요? 썸네일로 보셨듯이 자외선을 비춰보면 쉽게 찾을 수 있습니다 전갈은 형광이거든요 형광성은 전자기파를 흡수하여 가시광선을 쉽게 말해 빛을 내뿜는 걸 말합니다 전갈은 네온 초록색으로 빛나죠 물론 이 세상에 전갈만이 형광은 아닙니다 해파리, 양서류, 올빼미, 그리고 오리너구리까지 다양한 동물들이 형광이죠 여기는 베이커필드, 캘리포니아 근처의 사막입니다 캘리포니아주 베이커즈필드 대학교 생물학 교수 칼클록 교수와 전갈을 찾고 있죠 무려 10년간 전갈 연구를 했다고 합니다 If you have a black light, it's really pretty easy If they're there, you're gonna spot them Does he look like he's in a posture to like defend himself? Yeah, he's not real happy Okay <laughs> I'll grab my high-tech scorpion catching equipment here. It's a tongue depressor with a uh, yellow highlighter on it, so it fluoresces the black light, so you can see where it is. Got it. <laughs> Best technique is usually to put the vial behind him. Uh -huh. That in front of him. That was impressive. All right, should we give it a shot? Got one. And then just gently coax him back in. I usually just kind of do a little side and crab walk back. There you go. And just tilt it up. Whoa. Nope. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. I'm, I'm going to get him. 근데 왜 전갈이 형광일까요? I've got about 12 hypotheses, so you test them one at a time. Um, you have 12 hypotheses about why the uh, scorpion fluoresce? More like six, actually. I was being a little bit. Almost all scorpions fluoresce. I haven't seen it myself, but some that live. That live in caves that don't fluoresce, but it's only like one very small group. All the other scorpions fluoresce. One possibility is just this is a relic trait. It's something they developed way back when they first came out on land, and just haven't lost. A chemical that has another function that just happens to fluoresce. There are plenty of chemicals that fluoresce. I mean, we have um, internal bodily fluids that fluoresce, and clearly those were never exposed to UV light. So the idea of having a function for that fluorescence is kind of silly. This fluoresce is about the same color as a scorpion, but clearly isn't a scorpion. That's actually a rock. The color is a little off, but... But that is like... What is it? It's plastic from a milk bottle. Huh. You wanted to know if the scorpions were fluorescing in order to attract insects. Right. So how did you test that? What I did was I used preserved scorpions like these ones. 전갈들 중에 절반 정도는 UV 차단 광택제 담가 형광빛을 못 내게 만들었습니다. 그런 다음 파리를 잡는 끈끈이 위에 올려두고 얼만큼 많은 곤충들이 끈끈이 잡혔는지 세봤죠. 달빛도 중요한 요소인 것 같아 야외에서도 같은 실험을 진행했습니다. 보름달일 때랑 초승달일 때두 가지에 대해서 실험을 진행했는데요. 초승달일 때는 차이가 크지 않았습니다. 비슷한 수의 곤충들이 끈끈이 잡혔죠. 하지만 보름달에서는 오히려 형광이 나는 전갈들의 더 적은 수의 곤충이 잡혔습니다. It seems kind of counterintuitive. So that tells me that my hypothesis was wrong, which happens a lot. <laughs> Basically, yeah, they're not, they're not using their fluorescence to lure insects. In fact, the fluorescence is a bad thing for them in terms of their ability to catch flying insects, at least. Well, let me ask you this. If you find that fluorescence is counterproductive for the scorpion in some way, mm -hmm. doesn't that indicate that there has to be something useful that exactly. it's doing? Exactly. There must be something that counteracts that. Sort of negative. That for negative, it. yeah. Scorpions are really well adapted for what they do. One of the cool things here is that scorpions um, are actually able to metabolize um, iron and nickel. And in their um, pincer here and on the tips of their claws, they actually have basically iron to uh, strengthen that. Iron and nickel? At the end of their tail? Yeah, yeah. You can see like the, the color here is a little bit different and it's because of the iron. That seems very aggressive to me. One of the main things we're interested in here is how they see. So I've seen two of their eyes. So those are the median eyes right there. Those two dark spots. Yep. There's a cluster of three eyes right there and of course on the other side. So they're symmetrical. So they have a total of eight eyes. Can they detect light with parts of their body that are not eyes? Yeah, actually they can. 1968년 연구자들은 전갈들을 반만 가려진 패트리 접시 위에 놓았습니다. 그런 다음 밝은 빛을 노출시켰죠. 모든 전갈들이 빠르게 어두운 곳으로 몸을 숨겼습니다. 그 다음 연구자들은 전갈들의 눈을 가린 뒤 동일한 실험을 진행을 하였습니다. 그러자 93%의 전갈들이 똑같이 몸을 숨겼죠. 
이 발견은 매우 놀라운 사실입니다 정갈들이 빛을 감지하는데 눈이 필요한 게 아니라 몸으로 느낄 수 있다는 걸 말하는 거죠 One hypothesis is that they use it to communicate with one another. Um, the idea being that they use it to determine primarily whether or not another scorpion out there is of the same species for mating. One fairly low probability hypothesis is that they can use it as camouflage. Because they absorb UV light, um, if they're sitting on another surface that absorbs UV light and you have an organism that sees in the UV like some owls and things like that can do, um, they would tend to blend in very nicely with that. So it's a possibility, but not that many organisms see in UV, and not that many that uh, eat scorpions see in UV. So it doesn't seem very likely. There he is. You go for it. You want me to do it? You do it. Oh, close. Here you go. See. Let him go. Wow. One of the ideas is scorpions came out of the water. Full. Silurian period, long time ago, and there was a lot more UV just in sunlight and things like that then, because we didn't have an ozone layer, we didn't have you know all these things that are blocking UV in our atmosphere now. And so that one of the ideas is that it actually acts as a sunscreen. It's a way to absorb those um, damaging ultraviolet photons and convert them away into something and, and basically keep them from penetrating into the body and causing damage. Go in your home. There you go. We got him. And then there have been some other ones that are a little bit more out there. Um, one of which being the one that I've actually settled on at the end is that they use it as part of their sensory system to detect the presence of flight in the environment. So this was a later experiment after I gave up on the initial idea that I showed that it didn't work. So all I really did on that one. 실험은 정말 간단합니다. 전갈을 한 마리씩 여기에 집어넣은 다음 전갈을 자외선에 노출시켰죠. 숨을 수 있는 공간을 둔채 말이죠. 그런 다음 전갈이 얼마나 노출되어 있었는지 얼마나 오래 숨어 있었는지 시간을 측정했습니다 왔다 갔다 한 횟수도 측정했죠 그리고 이 실험은 형광성을 내지 않은 종에게도 진행되었습니다 더 나아가서 형광 능력을 제거한 전갈로도 실험을 진행했죠 간단하게 전갈을 오랜 시간 동안 자외선에 노출시키면 형광 현상을 전갈의 외골격에서 일으키는 물질이 광표백되어 더 이상 형광성을 띄지 못하게 됩니다 화학 물질이 제대로 작용할 수 없도록 파괴하는 것이죠. 이 실험의 결과 형광성을 띄지 못하게 된 전갈의 활동 수준이 크게 바뀌었습니다. 형광성이 없는 전갈의 행동은 어둠 속에 있는 것과 같았습니다. 노출된 것과 안된 것둘다 비슷한 행동 패턴을 보였죠. 형광성을 내는 전갈들은 자외선에 노출되자 활동 수준을 낮췄습니다. 이 실험의 결론은 바로 형광성 그 자체가 자외선의 존재를 감지하는 센서 같은 기능을 한다는 것입니다. Guy by the name of Douglas Gaffin um, came up with a great phrase for it. I wish I'd come up with the phrase, but I got to give credit. Um, he calls it a whole body photon detector. So it's part of their sensory system. What we don't know is why they want to detect ultraviolet light so badly that they've turned their whole body into a photon detector. The suspicion is that it has to do with determining um, whether or not they should come out at night. 한마디로 자외선이 전갈의 몸에 닿았을 때 전갈의 몸에선 형광을 바라고 전갈 꼬리가 이걸 감지하여 위험에 노출되어 있으니 숨을 곳을 찾는 것입니다. The scorpions are really good at starving for long periods of time. They don't need to eat that often. Mm -hmm. And coming out and foraging is dangerous for them. Mm -hmm. And so they don't like to come out when it's a moonlit night. Typically the only ones you'll find out in a full moon are the ones that are really hungry, really need food. If they're mm -hmm. well fed, they'll stay down. So they're using that as basically their cue to the environment and saying, you know, okay, this is how bright it is. So that's a cue as to how likely I'm going to get preyed upon. And yeah. then here's how hungry I am. That's a cue as how badly I need to get out and get some food. Right. And then the trade-off between those two is basically, should I go out tonight or should I stay in my hole? Yeah.